Hey, this is Dino, and I want to show you how to uh, import and deploy an API proxy from your file system into an Apigee organization via the administrative APIs. So it's pretty simple. Um, here I'm looking, I have my text editor open, and I'm looking at uh, the folder that contains the exploded um, API proxy bundle. So this is the thing that I downloaded from uh, the um, Apigee UI. Of course, you can create this on your own. There's nothing special about the download. Um, so at the root directory, there's a API proxy um, directory. And within there, there are a bunch of different artifacts that you need to create. Um, actually, the, uh, the manifest is not required. That's something that comes in the download. It's not something you have to up upload. But anyway, um, inside there, there's the um, uh, the proxies. Uh, there's a single proxy called uh, default. That's a proxy endpoint, and it has, uh, as I noted previously, the base path and the virtual host, uh, and then a bunch of rules. Um, uh, there are also there's also a directory for policies. Um, so, for example, the quota policy is here. The um, service callout that we looked at is here. Uh, the verify API key policy, all of these uh, are individual uh, XML files. And then final interesting thing here is the target, which points to uh, my target upstream. All right, so if you have an API proxy directory uh, that is structured this way, you can bundle it up into a zip and then import it and deploy it into Apigee Edge with the, um, uh, with the APIs. So uh, let's go to the command line. First thing I want to do is uh, make sure we're in the right pro the right place. So yeah, that's my API proxy uh, directory. That all looks good. So what I want to do is zip that. It doesn't matter what I zip it to, um, the name of the zip, but I do need to get uh, API proxy as the, the root in that zip file. All right, so now I've got a bundle, and this is now importable. How do I import it? Uh, well, let's look at the command I've got here. We need the management server. We need the organization name, a proxy name uh, that you want to attach to this thing that you're importing and, and the zip. And then there's the curl command. And you'll notice that for authentication, I'm using a dash n, which tells curl, just get the, um, the credentials from the .NET RC file that's local on my machine. Um, what that does is it just prevents, it, it, it uh, avoids me having to specify my username and password or a basic auth uh, header here. Um, now you can also use a bearer token uh, and I can get into how that all works too, but basically let's just set these, um, these uh, environment variables and then we'll invoke that command that curl command, and you should see that uh, import succeeding. The uh, response of the import is a JSON, and it tells me uh, the revision number of the application, uh, and then a bunch of, it just echoes back a bunch of information about the thing that I just uploaded, the policies that are in the bundle. Um, there's a SHA on the, the bundle. Um, the resource files that are used. So there was some JavaScript that I put in there, um, the target uh, endpoints and the names of them and so on. Uh, so the most interesting part is um, this revision nine um, or this thing here, revision nine, which is the thing that I'm going to need to know if I wanna uh, now deploy this thing. So flipping back here, um, for the deploy, it's just another uh, another curl command. I need the proxy name, which is uh, already set from up here, so I actually don't need to reset that. And I need the environment and the revision, uh, and then the invocation here. Again, I'll use the dash n to get my credentials, um, and we invoke uh, a deploy. Um, a post to a deploy with um, some form parameters, and it will actually deploy those uh, that that proxy. So set the environment, set the revision, um, invoke that curl, 
Now this uh, override true and delay equals 15 is for hot deployment. So if there are requests that are flowing through the system um, on the previously deployed revision, like revision eight, what this says is, you know, allow those to continue um, and delay up to 15 seconds for outstanding requests before you um, undeploy revision eight. Uh, but in the meantime, new requests will be handled by revision nine. So they're, they're sort of overlapping. And then I get the response back um, about 15 seconds later and it tells me revision nine is deployed across these different servers uh, and revision eight is undeployed uh, across those same servers. Um, so now if I flip into the, the user interface, I would see um, that this um, API proxy is deployed. All right, so that's the summary. That's how you can use the administrative API to import and deploy uh, proxy bundles into Apigee Edge. There are similar administrative APIs for manipulating all sorts of things. Um, inside the Apigee surface, like cache elements, uh, key value maps, certificates, uh, keys, and so on. Um, all of them are documented. There are wrapper tools and libraries for most of those things. So whether you want to just build curl commands uh, and run it in a bash script, or you want to run uh, or, or write PowerShell, you can do that. There's a PowerShell module. You want to write Node.js, there's a Node.js wrapper. There's a Golang wrapper. There's a Java wrapper. There's a PHP wrapper. So you can write in whatever language you like and accomplish these things. So that's all I got.